Let's see, is there anything else resurrectable? At the uh, Red Hill Mining Town Company e-waste dump. I don't remember that being broken the last time I was here. I thought the socket was missing off that CRT, but I don't remember it being actually busted like that. But the yoke is gone. No, it's not. It's right there. Okay. We know about this one. The uh, the. How about this one here? Let me see. Is this resurrectable? Well, unfortunately, it's got a brightener on it, and. The yoke is disintegrating. And all the vacuum bulbs are missing. What's weird is the uh, cathode doesn't look real blue. Like it's burned off. I mean, I can resurrect some pretty dilapidated crap, but this is, I could grab it. I could grab it, and I gotta carry it up quite a long ways, but I could grab it. Let's see, anything else here? Might be worth a picture. Look at that yoke. You think that's a little oxidized? Look at this. It's an old credit card. Scarjal Snarvler. Most people won't even know what this is. Except, oh yeah. So you put your uh, receipt in there and then you put your credit card in there and you go. And then you go. I think that's about it. I got all the resurrectable stuff out of this spot. This old electric heater, I bet this still works. What is there to go wrong with it? It's just a big resistive element. As long as it doesn't go open. Look at here. This looks like the... This looks like the plate that goes on here. Traveler. Boy, I never would have guessed that was the brand. Traveler, picture brilliance and vertical hold. Yeah, that's definitely it. So, these are Traveler, which I believe was Admiral. So this is, of course, the cabinet. You know, you leave the uh, cabinet out in the elements, the hot, dry, desert elements for 50 years. There's not much left of it. Although the chassis and the tube survive. And what always blew me away is how well the hermetic seal on the pins of the CRT lasted. Oh, here's something. It's had an IF strip. Looks like it had an integrated circuit radio. A 
another old answering machine cassette based answering system lithium iron phosphate battery two cell should be about six volts I'm gonna apply uh, power to this because I didn't bring a CRT tester and we'll see if the uh, tube actually illuminates before we take this junk home here we go about ready to power something up that hasn't had power to it and since the 60s and yes it is glowing so that that is promising you can see it right there so that's good well, it looks like it's getting dimmer, which might suggest it has air in it. No, I believe it's my battery it needs to be charged. Because uh, one bank is that bright, and the other bank is that bright. So, yeah, my battery needs to be charged. Yes, this old set is definitely sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, everything. I mean, this... <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a gouge. Uh, there's a noticeable pit there as well as here. So... Let's see, this is our traveler from the desert Red Hill mining town. And it is definitely baked. So I guess the first question is, anytime I see one of these brighteners, I automatically think, is the picture bulb any good? And we applied some voltage to it and it lit up. Usually when these have a lot of hours, that will become discolored like a bluish. So let's see, I did grab the other chassis. And I think I said this is a traveler. And this is in really, really 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 bad shape making this work again is not gonna be sunshine and lollipops let's try the bell turd on this thing people seem to have a fetish for this tube tester I don't know why I think it's mostly gimmicky so we'll plug it in and we'll see if the voltage drops Which it does, that's good. That indicates the filaments filamenting. Go to six point three volts. It is it is glowing. dead though hello is anybody home bring it up a little bit I think that's starting to move. Let me give it a little bit of time. Green is also black and white. Yeah, it's starting to move. It's come up uh, two increments at eight volts. So after about 10 minutes at eight volts, that's all I'm getting, which that is not enough. That would make a 
well, let's go down to 6 volts. That would make, I don't even know if that would show any light on the screen if it, the set was working perfect. I mean, that's dead. That is really, really dead. Actually, like, pick the gravel out of this thing before I can get this socket on. Yeah, there we go. Let's try this guy on the highest level of uh, restore which I've never even used so let me read the book I'm gonna hit this thing extra hard let me see I'm gonna take the filament up a little bit high because the um, rejuvenate takes the filament way up too so shorts no shorts you're not gonna get any cut off out of this and you're you're not going to get I mean this thing is so dead I don't know if there's anything for the rejuvenate I mean that's it I don't know if there's anything for the rejuvenate to even grab onto so let's try rejuvenate one out so you put it on rejuvenate two And it really lights the filament up. So I'm going to pop it with this. I'm going to let it get hot for a minute. I let it get hot. I rejuvenate two, and then I put my ear up against the tube when I push the button, and I heard it crackle inside there. So, maybe I'll try it one more time. Unbelievably, I think I actually got somewhere with this. What I did is I used Rejuvenate 2, which really cranks the filament voltage up and wax it hard. I did that twice, and then I, it was still down in the red, and then I came back and I did Rejuve 1 three times, and there's still no cutoff, so it's going to produce maybe a really crappy picture. Um, 6.3 volts, so I'm without the brightener, and I'm just barely in the green there. Now, will it hold that? Probably for a half an hour. It's already kind of slowly dropping. It is dropping. Let's go back to the bell turd and see what happens. And of course the bell turd says, oh, this is a new CRT now. You've rejuvenated it, it's new. Give the customer the lifetime service warranty form, uh, which is probably in here. And it's better than it was new from the factory because you rejuvenated it with a bell turd. Here we go. See? Restored like new. See that? Amazing results. Yeah, you didn't even restore it. Yeah, whatever. Advertising garbage. I like this one for rejuvenating. I'm used to it. I trust it. I know I'm not going to go too far with it and ruin a good tube or ruin a salvageable tube. But according to the bell turd, it's, it's good now. Maybe I should put this peel off on the window of my house or something. What do you think? Back window of my car.
kind of seems like maybe it was a design afterthought. Look at, they even put a little spring there to keep it closed. Isn't that cool? But that looks baked. Keep in mind, this has been sitting out in the desert sun, wind, rain, elements, probably since the 70s or early 80s. I wonder if this high voltage rectifier tube is any good. I wonder how many gallons of water have gone through this socket down into this transformer over the years. But yeah, this thing is... Maybe we should put the flyback tester on this before we even attempt to resurrect this thing. Because this thing is in bad shape. What are these? The speaker wires? It's been sitting for, I don't know, two hours. Let's see what happens. I'm going to... Um, I don't expect it to come up nearly as high as it was when we turned it off, and then we'll test the flyback. Yeah, see it. Rejuvenation's a joke. Let's see what we get here. This will actually power this fly back up. Just step step better than ring testing, but not a lot. Um, use the right setting on it and see where we get. That that looks okay. Six milliamps? What happens if I short this to ground? Nothing. This... This should actually be generating some high voltage and I don't... Is the secondary winding open? I would think we'd see some change there. Well, I go to here, and we get absolutely nothing. I need an ohm meter. Yes, the secondary on this flyback is open. Um, I've been moving this around, scraping it off. We're not getting anything here. Because this thing actually drives it, and it should produce a couple thousand volts. So, yeah, this thing is... crispo -taculated. Ooh, is that the wire right there? I love my ankle nibbler. Okay, well, one thing is for sure, that wire is definitely not connected to there anymore. So, the ankle nibbler agrees. Oh, oh. So what you do is you just keep nibbling away at the ankle until you find the end of the wire, which I can see it in my magnifying headset, but I can't see it here in the camera. There it is right there. You see that? There's the ankle nibbler. Well, I didn't have any continuity to that wire, so I'm continuing to nibble on back here. And I'll, I will say that this is really not too promising. I've had really good luck fixing these things, but this thing is just really in bad shape. Wait, what is this right here? Is this the wire? Hmm. Might. Still nothing. And, and I, 
I realize there's insulation on this wire, but I am scraping it off. I'm biting through it. There's no way. I love how this socket is on a porcelain standoff. That is so classy. After about, I don't know, however long I've been screwing with that catastrophe, this is where our CRT came back up to. I found both sides of the secondary coil, and one is right there. And the other is right here. This is the side that connected to this or the plate cap of the horizontal output which broke off. Everything I touch is breaking here. This is in real bad shape. I mean you just touch this wire and it cracks. Uh, this is... So I'm gonna, waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I'm gonna uh, use the soldering iron to make sure I burn the insulation off of this and then I'm gonna check it with the ohm meter. I use the iron to tin and burn off the insulation from both sides and I'm still open. This is a very simple flyback. We have our secondary coil, we have our filament winding for the uh, heater and the high voltage rectifier. Then these bottom two are the feedback winding for the uh, horizontal phase detector and then here is our plate for our horizontal output for our damper and then probably these two are for the yoke and the boost voltage but this ankle ain't nibbling right here um, the secondary is open and I'm looking at it through a 12x magnifying glass and I don't see any breaches in any of these ankles so Maybe what we do is we nibble at that other chassis and see if those ankles will nibble. The other thing I wanted to mention, I believe all the Aquadag is missing off this CRT. I th believe this should, this whole thing should be painted. Uh, and what that does is that forms a, a big glass capacitor which filters uh, the high voltage, you know, rectifier and then the glass capacitor of the CRT acts as a filter capacitor. So that's not a big deal because I got high voltage capacitors we could parallel in here to filter that off. Here's the other chassis and this one actually seems a little bit more complete if you want to use that word and less rusty. So let's see, I could, pop, I could pop that CRT on here. Ooh, look at, there's a different type of flyback. This looks much less baked. So on this one, from our horizontal output plate cap to our uh, high voltage rectifier 260 ohms uh, this is much there it is this is much happier so except on this one it appears the primary is open okay maybe not because watch if I short this to ground I guess I'm just not getting anything because the yoke is missing off of this one. Okay, to recap, that flyback is bad. This flyback is good and a lot more promising. Um, this chassis looks a lot more promising. Both chassis have adjustments that are broken off. This chassis, the yoke was cut, but this plugs in and the CRT socket leads were cut. This chassis still has a suction cup, high voltage cup that's still good. I pulled the yoke off of this chassis and you can actually 
kind of see the discoloration that I've been talking about on and off in the back portion of the CRT. Um, it shows the hours. The CRT is very weak. But let's check the yoke. I mean, it's, it's bad, but let's check it, ring test it. This section of the horizontal, 13 rings. This section of the horizontal, 14 rings. This section of the vertical, two rings, but we have a resistor, a damping resistor in parallel with the coil. In this section, we're not getting any rings. So is this section of the vertical open? Measuring it from here, I'm getting 14 rings on this section and zero rings on this section. And this is the other one. And at least this has got the plastic caps sort of still on it. Okay, ring-wise, I'm getting the same number of rings out of the horizontal and vertical on this one. And I think that's just those dampening resistors just killing the ringing, which is what they're supposed to do. So, um, we're going to do some other tests on this. I have a regular tube radio transformer here, 6.3 volts out for the filament and 320 center tap for the B+. We don't care about the B+. Here's what we're going to do. We're using the 6.3 volts here. I'm going through the amp meter. And we're going to measure the amp draw. So I'm feeding 6.3 volts, 60 cycles into this through an amp meter. So we're going to see this side, what this side does. Well, after I got rid of the cheap Chinese garbage clip lead, it's started much higher, and now it's dropping down. That's kind of weird. I wonder what that was about. It started out over an amp. Uh, very, very odd behavior. Let's try this side over here. Holy crap, six amps. And look at how it's dropping. I wonder if this has a temperature compensating resistor across it or something. Very odd. Okay, look at this one. So if I do this coil on this one, it starts at about 600 milliamps and it drops down. 0.3, about 0.32. Okay, let's try this side. Does the same thing. Okay, if I do that on this one here, if I do this side, Right, it does about the same thing. If I do this side, twelve amps, six amps, five amps. Five amps through a twenty amp coil through a twenty ohm coil. Where's the smoke? Seriously, where's the smoke? I mean, it's sitting there right at 5 amps. So is this the one that had zero rings or the one that had some rings? And this coil is hot to the touch. So I'm going to say that there are some shorted turns in this coil. Let's try the horizontal on this one. Okay, it kind of that one kind of settles down around an amp. Let's try this one over here. About the same. So that coil on that other yoke is definitely shorted.
It'd be easy, it'd be better to take the resistors off and ring test it. It would be probably a more standardized practice. But the thing is, is these are in such bad shape. I'm, I'm trying not to desolder anything that I can avoid desoldering. Because these things are in real bad shape. I mean, it's clear that that coil has got shorted turns in it. And it is the coil getting hot, not the resistor. I mean, five amps through a half watt resistor, it would just expire in a second. So let's see this one. So this, this sucker here is shorted. This plug has to go on this yoke. This CRT has to go on this chassis. The flyback here is tests okay. We don't know about the power transformers. I'm going to break this video off here and we'll come back to... Um, we'll start part two on the power transformer. If the power transformers are no good, uh, that'll shut the project down right here. This takes a 5U4. Also, I got to try and find a schematic for this. This is a traveler. I have absolutely no idea what model it is. I wouldn't even know where to look, where to start, how to guess. I just have to maybe think about what year it was made and start looking through the SAMs for that year until I find a match. So this will be part one of the Trashed Traveler Resurrection. Ankler, Ankler Nibbler Extravaganzoid.